Hello everyone, thank you so much for clicking on the video. My name is Latharis and I'm a multi-season challenger on different regions. I've managed to get challenger multiple times on NA, multiple times on EU and multiple times on Korea. Hit rank 1 uh, a few times during the last few years as well. So I think I have a good grasp of what Bart is good at, what Bart is bad at and what he should be building. This guide here is not going to be too focused on how to play Bart but more so how to build Bart. Because we already have a, a video from last year that kind of went in depth of how to play Bart and not a lot have changed about his playstyle. It's quite the same. The things that have changed a lot though are the itemization on Bart because mythic items have been removed and a lot of new items have been added and people are not sure how to build Bart now. And that's why I'm hopefully able to help a few of you, uh, you guys. First of all, I want to talk about the rune page. Not a lot have changed, but I think it's still very important to talk about it. I'm still a big uh, advisor of Fleet Footwork. I think the two main rune pages Bart can go is Fleet Footwork or Guardian. Both are good, and I think if you're starting out playing Bart, Guardian might be a tiny bit better, but I think Fleet has a way higher opportunity rating or whatever you want to call it, right? You are able to do a lot more if you play with Fleet than if you are playing with Guardian, as Guardian has 70 second cooldown early game. Um, and you basically just try to deny them damage instead of allowing yourself to weave in and out uh, of your auto attacks, right? So the rune page is looking following. Fleet footwork. This row is Triumph. The other two ones are not good ever. You never need mana and you don't really overheal at all. This one down here. Here you can choose a bit. If you're playing against enemy champions with a lot of CC, you go Legend Tenacity. If you don't think they have a lot of CC, or if the only CC they have is knockups, Tenacity doesn't work against knockup, then you go Legend Alacrity, the attack speed one. The last row here, honestly, all choices are bad. I found that last end averages out on like 10% more damage than the other ones, but don't really ever expect to have a lot higher than 400-500 damage uh, on these ones down here. In a secondary rune page, we go Resolve. I think Resolve is far better. I don't think you need Relentless Hunter from uh, the Domination Tree. With this, since we are foreshadowing here, gonna build Tank Bart, we go Conditioning, because we get a lot of the free tank stats. In the last row here, we uh, used to take something like uh, Revitalize on Flinching, but on Flinching has gotten nerfed quite heavily during Season 13 last year. And since we don't have a lot of healing in the build, we used to have something like a Radiant Virtue. Or we used to build a lot more Locket, so we got a lot more from the heal and shield power. We don't really gain any heal or shield items, so Revitalize doesn't do a lot besides with Fleet and Triumph. I find Overgrowth is just way better. It might scale slower into the game, but so does Conditioning. And it ends up being a very high value rune, right? It will always give you around like four, four five, six hundred gold value, which is insane. In the minor... Uh, stat runes, I would call it. We gain attack speed in the first row. It just... Bart doesn't have good AP scalings. Bart doesn't need the ability haste. The attack speed just allows his auto attack to feel a lot more fluent. So it's always the best. Middle row is always armor. You can go if you're against double AP uh, bot lane or AP uh, jungler and AP bot lane. You can go MR. But never go ability uh, force, adaptive force, okay? Last row here. You can either go HP or you can go MR if you're playing against mixed damage. Overall, the HP rune tends to be better as it outscales the armor on the MR by the time you're level 5. By the time you're level 5, the HP rune would be worth more. So you really only go these two if you feel like you need extra armor or MR during the early part of the game. Okay. There have been some talking, it's on PvE right now, so I'm just gonna mention it, that they might be removing the armor MR uh, runes and instead uh, adding a movement speed one here, and tenacity uh, option, um, and down here, a scaling HP, a flat HP, and tenacity or something like that. If that's the case, you could argue of taking removing the armor and taking the 2.5% movement speed, and instead of taking scaling HP, you might just take the flat HP, depending on the stats. But for now, patch 14.1, this is how your rune page is gonna look like. The second option, and maybe the more safer option, not as high of a skill curve, so easy to use, but doesn't have the same possibilities. You can do Guardian build. It's very easy to use. You can never really use it incorrectly. The only thing you need to be very 
uh, a while, obviously, the very long cooldown. It starts off a 70 second cooldown and drops all the way down to 40 seconds. Well, actually, 90 second cooldown to 40 second cooldown. So, like, it's a very, very long cooldown. The reason you would take Guardian is because you're playing into an engage lane, a kill lane, where you feel like you need the Guardian to make you guys actually be able to participate in the lane. If you have any, like, other reason, like, there's ever, like, not ever any other reasons to really go Guardian, right? Guardian is good into engage supports, bad into poke, bad into enchanter. So go it into pike, uh, rail, rakar, alistar, stuff like that. But do know that fleet can work really well into those as well, as it allows you more mobility, which allows you to get out of those and get uh, ranges, right? But yeah, if you opt into the Guardian, it's Guardian with Fund of Life, Conditioning, and the last row here can either be Unflinching, Revitalize, or Overgrowth. Overgrowth for a stronger mid game, Unflinching if they have a lot of CC or slows, and Revitalize if you are opting into like you have obviously have the guardian shield here then it increases from the life healing and then you might pair it with i don't know a locket because in the domination tree we paired with eyeball collection and ingenious under this is because with this guardian build instead of going uh blood song you will go the slay item which gives you uh hp and movement speed uh but it's on a tw uh, 20 second cooldown but when you go in genius under and as have it fully stacked out it should be reduced down to 12 second cooldown which makes it a lot more viable Obviously, you have other cho uh, choices here as well. You can opt into something like Cheap Shot if you have a more dominating lane, or Taste of Blood if you have a versus a poke lane. But I tend to like getting an uh, eyeball collection. Just getting 30 AP for free tends to have the highest value for me. Minor runes, just like Fleet Footwork, is attack speed, armor, MR, or, and HP. I hope that's helpful for everyone. If you have any questions about this rune page, just let me know. <clears throat> Let's talk about the items here. Bart's first item is obviously gonna be worth Atlas with double potions, right? On your first reset, try to always reset at 900 gold, where you can then reset with uh, Ionian Boots of Lucidity. If they have a lot of CC, you can opt into uh, the, uh, the Merc Threats as well. Just don't get baited into only going Merc Threats because they have a lot of magic damage. You only build this because you need the tenacity. The MR is a bonus, okay? First item we build, it's either gonna be Frozen Heart, since it's now 2300 gold, buff, it used to be 2700 gold, so insanely good first item, if they are very auto attack reliant. If they're not auto attack reliant, but instead you're playing against a heavy AP team, you instead rush, well we have it, Koenig Rukon. No matter what, you will always have these two items in your build. But the build order might change, right? Depending on what you need the most. Do you need the armor first or do you need the MR first? Don't be too worried about rushing close and hard, even though you don't have a lot of HP. You have overgrowth, um, you have overgrowth and, <laughs> and getting HP in your runes, right? So you'll be fine. You'll have 14, 1500 HP by the time you finish frozen hard. And then you get a lot of HP with this item. item. This item is a new item into the game. It's 400 HP, 80 magic resistance and 150 base of regen. And it gives you a permanent big magic resist shield, magic damage shield, which replenishes every 12 seconds if you haven't taken any damage, right? This shield on average gives you around six to 700 HP, basically. So the way I want you to look at this is for 2,900 gold, you gain 1,000 HP, 80 magic resistance and 150 base health region. Because even if you're not against a lot of AP heavy champion, do you remember a lot of the AD carries or the bruisers out there have magic damage spells that would be blocked by it or magic damage items that would also help against it. So this item is insane. If you have gotten these two items and the game is feeling good for you, I would advise to get Mandate uh, afterwards. Mandate has also gotten buffed or changed, take it however you want. It used to be you did damage when you applied the mark and then you did damage when the mark was removed. Now it doesn't do damage when you apply the mark, but when the mark is removed, it does 12% current HP in magic damage. And gives 25% movement speed to both you and whoever procs it for 2 seconds. That is absolutely insane. It's so much damage for such a cheap amount of gold, and it gives a lot of ability haste. And ability haste is a lot harder to come by now, as every item doesn't just offer it. So it just gives you far, far more now. So... Look to do this, get this if the game is going well for you. 
But instead, if you need like tank items, what you can look into is getting another armor item or another MR item. Just make sure that if you need more tanks, that's, that you get HP. Options here can be uh, Anathema's chains. This is if you're against one very fit AD or one very fit AP and you need to shut them down. You can also look to get Unending Despair, also really good HP or uh, armor item or Force of Nature, which has been buffed, or if you need an earlier Magic Rose item, then Abyssal Mask. All of these options are good. Realistically, you will have these three items, and then the last item slot is going to be flexed between these. If you have a super fed carry, you can think about getting Knight's Vowers one. Knight's Vowers buff, so it gives you more armor, and it's a tiny bit cheaper. So if you have a fed carry, like a hyper carry, something you're playing a lot for, think about getting Knight's Vow last item as well. Do not get baited into trying to buy too many control wards. There's too many brosses to even try to deny vision in. And overall, they are just too expensive for the amount of value they offer you right now. Think about it like this. A control ward costs you 75 gold and it gives them 30 gold. So every time you buy a control ward, you need to make sure you can actually earn more than 105 gold from it. Or make sure that it denies more than 105 gold from the enemy team. If you're not certain you can do that with it, then it's not a good purchase. Only buy it against stealth champions or to try to force them into you. Basically remove all vision so they have to face check. If you can't do that, then controller won't be good. Alright, I think that's pretty much it about all the items and all the runes. I'll be looking at the, the video guide forever whenever I get notifications. So feel ready to, uh, or feel free to comment down there and ask questions uh, or about your findings because maybe you have found out an even better part uh, build. So yeah, just let me know. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. Bye bye everyone.